This is a beautiful box. COVID-19, including their masks and uh, uh, social isolation, stay home, whatever. So this one is a very, very 4,000 years ago, uh, we found an uh, Four thousand years ago, uh, in China, it was believed, and uh, the name of the document is Kohan Kyuchu. And uh, Japan and Asia have an I an idea of nation for virtue. So ancient times, it was Kishi in China who preached, preached a nation uh, for the uh, virtue. Uh, but that was ruled by Bacho. Uh, this was uh, written in the Kohan future. That was a basis for this sort. It was the oldest basic philosophy in China around 4,000 years ago. Japan has somehow follows to this idea for generations. So in this uh, uh, writings, uh, they uh, advised the uh, emperor uh, to understand what is the happiness of the people. That is a, a starting of the uh, governance of the nation for virtue. So it was written like this, five happiness, what it is, health, wealth, long life, love of virtue, peaceful death. So I was, uh, very much surprised to see this one uh, first. Okay, uh, wealth, it's a little bit different from the Western. It means reasonable money to lead a usual life, not the millionaire. And uh, love of virtue. So this virtue is a special idea uh, of the uh, Asian countries, I think. So um, uh, how can I say, not selfish, respected by others, and then he can lead his own uh, right life, like this way. Other three is all related health. This is, a, I think, Japanese people, Chinese people, Korean people, Vietnamese, it's uh, a little bit different from uh, Western peoples. And uh, uh, last year, it's a, a little bit different, you know, uh, things. And uh, uh, in the World Cup rugby in 2019, uh, Japan uh, made a miracle uh, success, a good, you know, uh, records. And uh, that keyword is uh, uh, one team. I think, and uh, it's uh, uh, from the you know sense of the uh, control by virtue or something you know all the uh, traditions, and I'm very much happy and proud. You know, seven players were ex Tokyo University among them. So, And next, you know, uh, now we, how we are dealing with COVID-19, I'm listed up, some bankruptcy, some liquidation, closure, and uh, uh, survive by freezing or downscaling, uh, survive by changing and the challenge. So uh, this shows the average Japanese stock market. And uh, from the uh, January, and the drop has been starting from ma March, and uh, uh, coming back uh, around July. 
looking at this you know, transition of stock prices of Japanese market, it has declined in February and coming back in June. This is the most important mechanism and ability. Resilient in uh, with uh, we call resilient in the economy and uh, homeostasis, uh, homeostasis in the medicines, which returns to a healthy position. This is really, really most important mechanism of human being or uh, uh, social uh, organizations. About the cons consumption as returning as well, but slowest return, this, you know, uh, sky blue one is a transportation. And the next one is this, you know, uh, green one uh, is uh, restaurants. And uh, interesting is uh, this is alcohol and this is rice. Uh, but this sort of uh, features. Oh, uh, this is the outlook of the uh, Japanese companies and employment. Japanese company is uh, no, uh, 3,590,000, uh, 3 million companies, big, medium, small, this sort of distribution. Employment is like this, this sort of distribution. Bankruptcy is 8,000 cases and uh, this distribution and the liquidation and the closure is a very big figures. And I, a movement of unemployment um, from this point, uh, this is um, uh, March up to now, uh, around the, um, basically unemployment was uh, 2 million. Increase is around the uh, 500 or 490,000. Uh, unemployment uh, has been increasing because of COVID-19. And uh, this uh, chart shows, this left one shows that uh, there are two types of employment uh, we have. Uh, employment, uh, Regular employment and no regular employment. For example, regular employment and uh, part-time job and uh, such a uh, term is not uh, fixed. Then not fixed uh, employment. These uh, employment, non-regular employment has been decreasing. It means, you know, uh, losing the job. By industries, uh, hotels and the restaurants were very much hit. So recently, uh, bankruptcy or closure since February is a 400, uh, 504 cases nationwide. Right. This uh, lost the employment uh, 10,000, like this. And the government support uh, around six months, uh, it's enough and kind and enough, but slow. The reason why uh, it's, uh, it is slow is uh, uh, they doesn't have you know, uh, enough facilitation to provide the money. So we are expecting uh, thanking to the uh, deregulation of fintech uh, companies, it should be improved, I believe. So this case uh, is a, a very important case, I think, and uh, useful information uh, for this occasion. Uh, this story is a uh, this gentleman is a representative of Hoshino Resort. Uh, he is a, a, an innovator and a successful uh, businessman starting from uh, SME, uh, just in a small uh, hotel. So nowadays uh, they develop 
developed a large na uh, nationwide business uh, who are turning around of the kings with poor performance. So there is something sim similar to a uh, Uniqlo Yanai. And uh, these uh, six statements shows uh, very good hints uh, for you all, I think. So uh, what is important for the tura uh, tourism industry is not how to survive the present. The important thing is to make a, a plan of a year and a half. Otherwise, you will be unnecessarily impatient and permissible about the problem. Demand is expected uh, to gradually recover in the future. The first comes uh, micro tourism, then comes uh, some, you know, uh, medium distance, you know, uh, movement. Finally, trip by inboard. Japanese tourism makes market is about 26 trillion year. And uh, inbound market is only about 20%. It can be overcome if domestic demand is uh, increased. If uh, inbound is stopped, so uh, it can be shifted to the uh, domestic market. Overseas uh, travel from Japan to outside it's uh, they spent the 1.1 trillion yen just for uh, paying domestically. They cannot travel abroad, so they are going to start to spend this money uh, domestic in domestic market. Uh, he had a 30 years experience and many uh, similar uh, troubles, uh, bubble economy, divan and the Great East Japan aspect, so on and so, and uh, uh, making the methods such as the sales media, cost control, so on and so, uh, he, he is very much confident to overcome. Some may be thinking of leaving the industry in the wake of the corona uh, crisis, but he thinks that if I believe the tourism industries, I should not live now and experience this crisis. Chance comes. The, this experience of overcoming gives more uh, strong confidence in the future. This sort of the concept he has. Okay. And uh, last, you know, uh, item is uh, uh, how I'm getting the uh, global wisdoms. Uh, so, this was made when I was in Mitsubishi, uh, in charge of the uh, study of, together with you know uh, many CTOs of the Mitsubishi groups. I was looking for the wisdom, uh, and uh, we came to get those. So just I'm introducing this. So one is economist. Uh, he's a biremo. He mentioned in complex system like this society and system, challenging speed and the flexibility for change are key for success. This is his philosophy. And the uh, next scientist is uh, it's a scientist for the brain, and he is explaining the complex systems, nature. And uh, he gave uh, uh, several uh, metrics uh, to understand to utilize this knowledge of, about the complex systems. And for Japanese people, uh, uh, he made the sana otherwise. In a deep hole where sometimes Japanese falls in, suffering for superficial phenomena, continuing imitation for the dominant form. This is against, you know, uh, how to handle complex systems. We are learning. And the next one, top management. Uh, he is from the Mitsubishi Chemical Holdings. Uh, and he made this sort of the chart and the three dimension. This left side, uh, it's a, a we call MVA axis. And this is knowledge axis. This one is a heart uh, and virtue axis. This now, are you healthy? 10 years 
are you going to be healthy in the market? And 50 years, 100, uh, can you be accepted by society? This sort of the uh, dimension. It, it can be used for the uh, really uh, SME operations, I think. Last one is uh, we have uh, many founders in Japan and uh, we are learning from those uh, records. Okay. And uh, summarization, I, uh, time is limited to summarization here. So I made the uh, lecture about the uh, uncertain times, changing principle of post COVID-19 direction is to return origin point of each now. Key question is like that. Uh, we should learn every day with change, challenge and flexibility and the global wisdoms could help those. SME could play key roles for these challenge and challenge because of his nature. Platforms of education like universities and healthcare like hospitals and the regional SME, SME hub like the yours uh, would be the key places, I think. So the, the last question is this one. Are you ready to help more serious damaged countries and peoples? Okay, thank you very much for hearing. Takeda, they already given um, the presentation, the experiences, also the knowledge in Japan uh, to cover this COVID-19 and then uh, this is how the strategy and um, one thing that uh, life blessing of happiness it's an interesting thing of course and then um, how to deal with the COVID-19 yeah so thank you very much for Prof Takeda for yeah, yeah. the presentation okay. Well, well yeah. okay next we will have Prof Pan Weihua from National Yunlin University of Science and Technology, Taiwan. Okay, Dr. Pan Weihua. PhD University of Birmingham, United Kingdom, PCM, PCL Training Program, University of Harvard, US, Chairman of Business Department, and Deputy Dean of International Affairs, Director of Continuing Education Center in National Yunlin University Science and Technology, Taiwan, and also visiting professor in visiting professor in Institute Technology 10 November ITS Indonesia National Saratov Technical University Russia Vietnam Con Commerce University Vietnam National Chair of Business Division of National Skill Competition Research Interest International Business and also Strategic Management Newspaper columnist for eight years, more than a hundred columns, and published more than 60 various academic papers. Here will come Professor Pan Weihua from Yunlin University. Hello, Prof. Pan. Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. yes. How are you today? Uh, yes. Uh, here, here I'm located, located in the central part of Taiwan. Oh, yeah. Now the weather here is, is, uh, is a mild. Oh. And just <laughs> like the pandemic in Taiwan. Oh, <laughs> okay. The is much better now. Oh, oh. Okay. oh yeah. I wish uh, all, all, all my, my friends, friends are okay, getting in the conferences. Oh. Uh, your your place, place, your city, and your, your country, country can be improved later. later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Prof. Pan, let's start. Okay. okay. 
Now, now I would like, like to uh, introduce uh, uh, my topics about uh, 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 my, my my topics. topics. Okay. okay. Here, Here is, is my, my brief CV myself. myself. I'm majorly talking, talking about the response strategies. Okay. okay. During the pandemic of the COVID-19 uh, in Taiwan. Taiwan. Because, because recently, recently I just done a research, research okay, okay, uh, in, in these topics. Okay. Okay. In order as you can see in this graph, okay, okay. the, the coronavirus outbreak in Taiwan seems to be related in mind. Okay. Okay. And so, so far, far, we only have about 500 uh, cases and, and only seven, days, seven uh, case deaths. So it's so related in mind, mind okay, 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 compared to the rest of the, uh, the country in the world. So it was a lucky and a gut-breaking thing to me. Also, the coronavirus hit and end in Taiwan. It has roughly started around March. And, and within, within a month or two, two okay, okay, the, the whole peak uh, came to an end. So far, so even though they, they may be a second wave of the shock, but since uh, the, the, the second wave the, 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 the shock seems to be okay in Taiwan. So now, mostly in Taiwan, everything has been back to normal. Okay. We already did it. Okay. The health check, regular health check at every door and the entrances. So it's largely eliminated. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the coronavirus as an external impact to the Taiwanese businesses. So therefore, I should talk about first about the characteristic about the Taiwanese businesses. Because as the previous Japanese scholar has mentioned, the Taiwan, uh, China, Japan, Korea, we are this Asian culture, the Asian culture. We have some particular characteristics which may help, help to contain uh, the, the, the pandemic, pandemic difficulties. Okay. Okay. And, and also, we should try to identify is it a short or long impact to the local, local Taiwan businesses. Uh, and also, uh, in the end, and then I'm talking about something related to the responsive strategies. And, and uh, let's, let's see if there is any possibility about the so -called called paradigm shift okay, okay, in Taiwan. Taiwan. Now, uh, now uh, let me introduce some statistical facts, facts of the Taiwan SME businesses. Okay. In order in Taiwan, uh, around 98% of the Taiwan businesses are SMEs, and it higher about 78% uh, of the total employment. And uh, more particularly, Taiwan SME are mainly concentrated in manufacturing wholesaling, construction, and then information, communication, and technological services. Okay. So it was something uh, uh, quite unique okay, to other SME around the world. Okay. And we are also uh, have a very striving SME, but with a high fatality rates as well. Okay. And also high percentage of the SME uh, in manufacturing and ICT services. Okay. Uh, it is uh, as a result of the know-how diffusions and the entrepreneurship in Taiwan. And so therefore, I, if I try to summarize the characteristics of the Taiwan small and medium-sized enterprises, uh, I will say they are quite entrepreneurship, okay? Because in Taiwan, we are large SME by number. And also, you know that we only have a 23 million population in Taiwan, but we have about 1.5 a million registered enterprises. So that means every 15 people, okay, including the baby and the retired pensioners, okay, we. Have
So this kind of system uh, is uh, integrations in decentralized industrialization through the whole uh, network linkages. Okay, I can show you a picture to talking about what is the so-called uh, network linkages and the so-called what is the so-called center satellite systems. Okay, so you can see we have a few uh, companies. Okay, big companies. There are a lot of smaller enterprises here, and the smaller enterprises they tend to focus in on one of their components and the particular expertise products, okay? So therefore, even though they are small enterprises, but sometimes they are highly specialized, okay? And sometimes they can also reach the scale economy, okay? And they are integrated in the decentralized industrial system structures, okay? And also both of their relationship they tend to be the long-term reciprocal relationship. They pay a favor to each other. This kind of partnership are proved to be a very successful, uh, the, the, the cost sharing or impact sharing okay, assistance in Taiwan. And uh, also this kind of system is open but non-exclusive. So you can see this firm F, they, they are at the same time, they serve the company B, company A, and the company C, okay? So it also very helpful for the technological transfer, okay? For example, if the company A, uh, they have a particular advanced, okay, uh, requirements to the, fir to, uh, to, the, uh, to the firm F, the MF has to be, make their best effort to improve their products, then maybe afterwards, they are able to provide a better product to the other companies, okay? So it creates some kind of technological and know-how transfer, okay, uh, within the systems. Okay, now let's talk about the impacts of coronavirus in Taiwan enterprises, okay? You know, the, this, uh, this chart shows some very interesting uh, the, the, the things that, uh, you know, the, the year 2020, it is a coronavirus impacts. This is the PMI indicator, the procurement manager index. Okay, the, the PMI index you can see in the year 2020, it has sharp drop, okay, during the pandemic. But however, before the pandemic, this already uh, has a very serious uh, drop, okay, because of the Sino-US trade war. So that's why I has to talking about why the Sino-US trade war has a very strong impact to Taiwanese economy because Taiwan uh, businesses are highly concentrated and dependency uh, in China, okay, in China, in China market and the China sourcing. So that's why the Sino-US trade war are also have a very serious impact to us. Okay. This is recently, uh, I instruct my research students, uh, we just finished a, uh, a, uh, uh, quantitative study uh, using the event study approach, okay, talking about uh, during a pandemic, what kind of enterprises they can survive better, okay, they can perform better, okay. And also you can see um, very similar to the PMI indicator, before the event date of the pandemic, okay, the China outbreak first, okay, uh, the whole Taiwanese capital market has been suffered by the Sino-US trade war already. And also more seriously impact is the US outbreak because a lot of the US and the Europe, okay, the market close up. It has a very strong impact to the export oriented businesses in Taiwan, even though they are SMEs. Okay. And uh, if we combine these two external impacts together, okay, you can see uh, long before the coronavirus, okay, uh, the Taiwanese enterprises has been react to the so-called the decoupling risks, okay, between the China and the United States, okay. The Sino-US frictions hit those particular the most. For example, if you have a China center supply chain, okay, uh, because uh, maybe you know, or maybe you didn't know, okay. And the top 10 exporters in China, for example, seven of them actually, are Taiwanese companies, okay? So this therefore, uh, we have a very high China dependency, roughly 80% of the listed firms, okay? Listed firms, uh, they invest in the Chinese mainland, okay? So the coronavirus 
uh, when coronavirus virus hit the Taiwan business businesses, okay, now we have another uh, particular uh, damages to those who are rely on the cross border uh, cross border transactions. Okay, it's a lot of the company they are center okay in China. Okay, so the cross border control limited okay uh, their uh, transporter uh, transactions. Okay, so therefore. Uh, the long and the cross-border supply chain companies of our industry, they suffering the most. The other is the service and domestic businesses, okay, particular tourism, retailing, a restaurant, etc. Okay. Recently, I also have a, a research student which is doing the tourism businesses, tourism, tourism studies, okay, in Taiwan. Okay. And also we have a different impacts, okay, uh, towards the Taiwan businesses. Some actually that they are benefited. Okay, uh, sorry, excuse me, I, I I shut down my telephone. Okay, so uh, it's very sorry. I just have a emerging phone call. I don't know where it is come from. <laughs> okay, so the crisis management is important, right? Okay, and uh, so therefore, uh, actually the the different impacts. Okay. Uh, to the different industry actually some industry actually they perform better in order because i just conducted a survey to some sme some of them they say actually they are businesses actually they are better okay some some benefited uh, because some crisis is some others opportunities okay okay and the sino us frictions tend to be uh mid to long-term impacts while the coronavirus likely to be a short to midterm impacts, okay. And you can see it in this chart, okay. Some countries, particularly like the United Kingdom, okay, there's a very obviously second, uh, uh, second, second hit, uh, okay, second after shock, okay. So you see, uh, there is an uneasy recovery under the pandemic, even though the China is the the key economy partner with Taiwan. And the Taiwan is also already uh, successfully contain the local pandemic transmissions. But however, because the whole world, okay, still locked down, okay. So the possible second and the third after shocks globally. And in the meantime, there is a slim hope in the quick vaccine, okay. And uh, there is a particular worry about the group immune issues because in other different countries, uh, there are a lot of the cases, okay, so they may have an early group immune, okay, but group immune may be absent in Taiwan. So maybe it's difficult for us to uh, relieve, uh, remove the border control in a short period of time, okay. So therefore, uh, maybe we have to uh, to adapt it to the new normal, to live along uh, alongside with the viruses, okay. Okay, so you can see uh, this, I, I, I got this, okay. So this is according to the survey. Maybe they is going to have a very, uh, uh, seem to have a, a few aftershocks and a long tail, okay. Uh, even after the year tw uh, uh, 2022, okay. Okay, uh, now let's talking about the strategic uh, framework for the coronavirus disruptions. As I already mentioned, because the border control become a big question in Taiwan, and also Taiwan is an island economy. So therefore, the decentralized supply chain become the key issues here. Uh, a lot of the businessmen, they are talking about how they can decentralize the supply chain. And also, we have to thinking about what is the so-called safe productions, safe production or the smart productions in facilities and the investing in the human capitals, okay? Uh, because, uh, for example, in some uh, labor intensive industry, if we one get infected, maybe the whole factory has to be quarantined, okay? So it, I'm able to, uh, to, 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 to open the work, okay? And the companies, they should turn to the digitalizations in their uh, commerce, okay? And of course, as I just mentioned, that the crisis management is important here and uh, in Taiwan. And I think also uh, to the all businesses around the world, okay. You know, the SME at the pandemic, uh, for them, it is uh, immediate uh, crisis management, okay. 
I particularly like to mention in Taiwan, uh, we're talking about a lot of the so-called bull whip effect in the supply chain. The bull whip uh, effects in the supply chain means there is going to, if, if the end, okay, end consumer demand, they have a change, okay, they likely to have an increasing swing, okay, in the order or the in, in the inventory, okay. Okay, it may be increase, okay, increase and enhance, okay, the impacts, okay. You know, the recently uh, in my city, there is a company called Formosa Textile. Uh, Adidas companies withdraw its order from the Formosa Textile, okay. It caused a very huge impact to the whole local enterprises and the whole local industry because of the bull wheel effects, okay. Maybe Adidas only cancel about the 30% of the orders, okay? But the Formosa cancel maybe 50% of the orders, okay? So for the rest of the smaller supply chain, okay, companies, they may suffer the most, okay? So therefore, in the meantime, how to have a good cash flow management and the retain earning management uh, in this crisis and or in these opportunities uh, is critical, okay? For example, uh, withholding payments, okay, nego renegotiating for the better terms, okay, and also in order to survive, in, uh, you have to divestment uh, for some uh, urgent cash, right? and uh, also you have to be very cautious for the emerging opportunities, okay, and also the government is very quickly to provide some immediate relief programs, okay, from the Taiwan government, okay. Uh, Yes, later I will talking about what kind of relief programs provided by the Taiwanese government. Okay. And also there is a uh, uh, impact and the uh, cost sharing systems in Taiwan. As I just mentioned that Taiwan uh, is uh, has uh, the so-called uh, center satellite systems okay, here in Taiwan. So actually uh, lots of the people, lots of the SMEs, they can collectively sharing our absorptions within the networks uh, through their partnership, okay? So it helped them to, uh, to, to adapt to the crisis better, okay? Compared to the SME in the other different countries, okay? Then uh, we may like to think about, is there any possibility about the so-called paradigm shift, okay? After the, after the pandemic, okay? Paradigm shift after the pandemic. You know, the, uh, as, as I just mentioned that, maybe uh, the whole, the, the pandemic uh, will be largely okay after the vaccines and after the year 2022, okay? So in the meantime, the low social context, okay, will become a new normal, okay? Low social context, okay? So therefore, the online shopping, okay, uh, will be better than retailing uh, businesses, and uh, it will be also better than the department store because, because department store is a highly concentrated one. Okay, so actually it gives some opportunity for the small retailing businesses. Okay, compared to the bigger department store, and also um, they likely to have uh, the uh, the flexible work and uh, the video conferences. Okay, allow the 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 em your employment. Uh, to working at working from home, okay, and also a lot of the work has to be transformed to the digital platform, okay, e-platform, etc. If you are the small small and medium sized enterprises, actually you don't need to build up your e-platform by yourself, okay. I think there are a lot of very uh, mature and very functional e-platforms. They are able to provide the enough of supports, okay. Uh, so this is uh, the, the first dimensions. The second dimension is the uh, decentralized supply chain. Okay. You know, the pandemics and the border control uh, uh, give us a license okay, not too, too dependent okay, on one firms or one countries. Okay. If we too dependent on one firm or one countries, okay, so once there is a crisis, okay, it will have uh, difficulties. Okay. So therefore, uh, we are thinking uh, to build up the so-called shorter supply chain, okay? How can we make it shorter? That means a lot of the uh, supply chain firms, 
they should be a localized firms. Okay. And also a lot of countries, they are thinking to localize uh, their basic need and the national strategic important materials, okay, particularly to the hygiene and the safety reasons. Okay. And finally, it is the safe productions. Okay. You know, the, these issues, uh, this pandemic uh, teach us a lesson about the safety and the hygiene is the most important things okay, uh, to the business owner and uh, to the country as a whole. Okay. So we have to think about how to safeguard okay, our, employee, our, 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 our employees, okay, how to ensure their hygiene. It not only uh, benefit to our employers, but also benefit to the company as a whole. And also, <clears throat> uh, the, you know, the Taiwan, uh, we uh, has long been uh, tried to imitate the so-called uh, Japanese uh, just-in-time assistance to keep as low as inventory as possible. Okay, but this crisis uh, make us. Uh, an idea that safe inventory may be more important okay, than uh, no inventory or low inventory. Okay. And also a lot of the small businesses are thinking, how can we use in the least uh, investments okay, to realize the, the automations, to realize the automations, okay? Because the level, once it get quarantine, okay, it may have a very strong impact to the whole companies Okay, and also you have to keep the social distance. Okay, so therefore the automation seems to be a necessary investments. Okay, for the SMEs. Okay, and uh, in the meantime, uh, the Taiwan government is promoting the smart productions uh, with, with the, the cutting edge 5G and the IoT applications and uh, through the big data and the AI technology, et cetera, okay? Now we are introducing it, okay? Now, later I will introduce, okay, and how the government measures, okay, about uh, how to introduce in the uh, smart production through the SMEs. Okay, so you can see according to this chart, okay? There is a paradigm shift during the uh, crisis, okay? They may earlier, okay, come, Okay, before example, like the e-commerce, okay. Uh, e-commerce maybe, okay, this is their, 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 their growth chart. Because of the crisis, it make it earlier, to re realize earlier, okay. <clears throat> okay, then uh, let me talking about the, what the Taiwan government does uh, to reboot the economy, okay. Uh, as I just mentioned, and uh, and also this morning I heard uh, about the Australian uh, government is, is doing to reboot uh, Australian economy. Actually, the government is doing is very similar. Okay, and uh, but of course we have some our particular uh, characteristics. Uh, you know, the, for the domestic consumptions because domestic uh, industry was hitting the most. Okay. So the government uh, introducing various stimulus vouchers, okay, and they distributed uh, to the citizens, okay, uh, countrywide, okay. It particularly designated to help the hotel, restaurants, and the tourist industries because these three industry was hitting the most, okay. And also uh, for the corporate, uh, of course, we offer something very similar with Australia, like the tax break. Okay, bank loan and also pension payment deferrals, okay, and, or sometimes the rate deductions, etc. Okay. And also we offer uh, some facility improvement loans. Okay. Uh, the government uh, because in the mean uh, it before uh, the businesses they are all very busy. They don't have time and uh, they don't have the uh, time to improve their uh, facilities. Now, because of the uh, the economy downturn, so that now they are able to have the time to investments in the health and the safety related working environments. Okay, uh, so therefore, uh, this is uh, the right timings. Okay, for the facility improvements. Also, the government over 
quite a lot of the on the job training programs, okay, to encourage uh, the governments, uh, to encourage the corporates, okay, to introducing the on the job training programs, okay. Um, the, you know, the every companies, okay, their training program, and uh, they can be subsidized by the state up to the about the three million NT dollars. Okay. And also the employment plan, they sub subsidize the salary uh, up to uh, about 50% uh, of the basic salary in order to uh to to keep uh, the jobs, okay, to, to keep the 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 particular the the the, the low the low level low, uh, the the off on and office jobs okay going okay for the job uh, jobless uh, people we also offer some training programs okay uh, we subsidize the government subsidize training program tuitions okay and uh, the jobless people if you join the training program you also can receive in the monthly stipends okay. Uh, for your survivor, okay, and also you can have an uh, employment benefit, roughly sixty percent of your average, okay, monthly insurance uh, salary, okay, and then uh, if you ask, uh, feeling that you are going to have uh, further educations, and uh, for the jobless people, your tuition can be also be subsidized, okay, by the by the states, and also offer some immediate part time work plan, okay. Uh, for the jobless people, okay. You know, for the training programs, okay, uh, because uh, in this morning, uh, we just heard about uh, the dis distinguished speaker, uh, the who is the, uh, the the minister of the uh, level of the Indonesia, okay. So I'm talking about something about the training program in Taiwan. You know, in Taiwan training programs, uh, because the states always don't have enough uh, capability and the resources to offer so many courses. So therefore, uh, the states outsourcing a lot of the training programs to the uh, certified institutions like uh, the universities, uh, like other uh, education institutes, okay? They are particularly aiming for the future industrial needs, uh, such as uh, intelligent machinery, uh, silicon, Industries, green energy, biomedicine, okay, defense and aerospace, and uh, agriculture and uh, circular economies, okay. The purpose is, is try to move Taiwan forwards from the uh, contract manufacture to a new uh, commercial model, okay, and the center on the high value AD businesses and the service and the service provide service and the solutions. And also try to reduce in the rigidity of the workforce. Okay, in this uh, here in Taiwan. Okay, so you can see uh, because uh, I am the director of the Intake Continuing Education Center. So now actually uh, I, we are quite busy. Okay, for example, we offer some training courses in the smart productions. Okay, uh, to uh, this is a company it's called the Gigabyte. I think it is a quite a famous uh, uh, laptop. Uh, notebook computer makers, okay, in the world, okay, and they are trying to have uh, artificial intelligence, uh, introducing artificial intelligence in their production line, okay. So now we offer their training courses, and also we offer some training courses for the safeties, okay, safety uh, courses. This is the petrochemical industry, and nearby our university there is a very big petrochemical complex, okay. It's uh, owned by the Formosa Group, so therefore we offer them some pet petrochemical safety courses to their employees. Okay, so the training those training programs are all subsidized by the states, and the courses are provided by the universities. Okay, so in the end, in the conclusions, okay, maybe we should really think about the what SME can do during the pandemic. You know the. I think SMOE, SME, uh, we are characterized as a small scale, okay, resource shortages, okay. But we are entrepreneurial and we are very flexible and the SME are able to quickly respond, okay, to the external changes, okay, 
these are uh, our advantages uh, compared to the uh, the the large enterprises or state owned enterprises okay so the sme can do is to uh retargeting okay the available customer groups okay in these challenges or even in these opportunities okay so the companies uh, need to always to retargeting okay their customer group particularly uh, at the time of the so-called uh, paradigm shift or paradigm change okay of course the customer groups can be changed too okay and also the law contact okay, society means reducing the service and the trust okay so it is uh, uh, increasing issues uh, talking uh, quite the most by the big enterprises okay but for the smes because we are closer okay we are familiar okay with our customers okay and we are close to the locals customers so maybe we can take the advantages okay in our stronghold constituency customer group okay finally uh, the smes we should re always thinking about the resource uh, pre colleges idea okay because we don't have uh, enough uh, resources uh, we always uh, the it has a uh, the finite uh, resources but uh, we have to try to seek in the complementary external resources in the meantime okay as such as uh, the the social capital and the partnership network etc okay uh, you are able to uh, uh, the, 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 because to dealing with the crisis uh, collectively is always better to deal with the crisis alone okay so that's what uh, according to uh, Taiwan SMEs and uh, according to my studies okay so I can give some suggestions to Indonesian uh, minister uh, ministry of labor uh, for some references and uh, thank you for listening thank you very much Thank you very much for Professor Pan Weiwa to deliver the presentation. Is hello. it um, hello? Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof Pan, yes. <laughs> to deliver the material. And then uh, this is an easy Prof Pan to recover from the pandemic. But um, in the Yunlin, that uh, Professor Pan has uh, lead the training program actually, and the institution. Indian Tech for uh, small medium enterprises during this pandemic. Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much for sharing the experiences. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. My honor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, after from Australia, from Japan, and Taiwan, they share their strategies to overcome this during this COVID pandemic crisis, and then. Now, let's start to Indonesia. Now, the last but not least, here our speaker from Bank Indonesia, Mr. Budi Hanoto, is the MBA. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Uh, thank you. Uh, before that, I will read the curriculum vitae first. Okay. Uh, for Mr. Budi Hanoto, is a MBA, graduate from MBA program, Swinsburg University Technology, Melbourne, in 1997. Bachelor in Management, Faculty of Economic General, Sudirman University, Prokerto, in 1989. The work experiences. Since 2001, and senior economic and deputy director in some department, like Department Economic Research and Monetary Policy, uh, BE in Europe, Representative Office, and Department of International. Until now, is uh, an executive director, SMS Development and Consumer Protection Department. Here's the fourth speaker. Budi Hanoto is a MBA. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Let's, Can let's we start? start? Yeah, let's start. Uh, the 
Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to all webinar speakers and participants, uh, I really uh, truly uh, honored uh, to be here and have the opportunity to join uh, other distinguished uh, speakers in this webinar. And I would like to share my impressions on the recent policy on MSMEs in the middle of the face of the current digital era. Uh, this is my uh, 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 first time in the international seminar, but uh, hopefully I can share uh, uh, my material here. Okay, uh, uh, please allow me to organize my presentation. We can go to the next page. My presentation will cover four parts. Uh, first is uh, new era. Uh, Era new normal. This is a change in the MSMEs behavior and business process. Let's say in this part, how we see MSME change response to the new normal era. This is about the changes on the behavior and the way of this process. And then the second one, MSME as a new engine of growth. This is reflected that uh, how Indonesia economies will put MSMEs as a new resources of uh, uh, new sources of growth. The third part, this is very important, uh, uh, MSMEs how we will look at this uh, related to uh, the recent situation uh, that MSMEs should be prepared to do in the to enter the ecosystem. The ecosystem in the digital economy and finance. And last but not least, uh, we will draw up uh, with the proposal. Okay, we move on to the slide uh, four. I have a slide four here. Um, people already know that the world has entered two specific, uh, two specific, what do you say, strategic environment. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the, the, the globalization and then also the digitalization. Uh, what, what does that mean? mean? Uh, the, the, the globalization means it has been characterized by the increasing intensity of spreading services, knowledge uh, based on activities, and also inter regional trade. Uh, as uh, opposed to the reduction of the trade in goods and This is not up and down, but the situation is the globalization. And then in the right hand side, we this occur in line with the digitalization, which we have tremendously enhanced. And in every city, the data, logistic and flows of transaction. And also oh, reduce the cost. Yeah. Yeah. It is uh, the question is uh, in one uh, set is uh, the globalization and the other set is the increase of digitalization. Uh, next, I have a survey I get from the survey of uh, Fortune magazine. Uh, uh, the survey of uh, 500 CEO population and majority is agreed. Yeah, majority is agreed that uh, 80 percent. Uh, Increasing national protection means that uh, increasing national protection of domestic products. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, and then second one is uh, the products of domestic uh, production and of taker of every production. Uh, this is a slide number. Uh, 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 we, we can move. Yeah. Uh, 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 so. Uh, In the, this slide, yeah, the survey, the, the, the same survey, yeah. uh, uh, on the impact of uh, COVID-19 or MS, MS, MSMEs, and the survey shows that uh, most of the problem of MSMEs face the marketing. This is about the 35% and the demand is 34%. Well, in the industries uh, most impacted by pandemic are the food and the creative industry. This is the total survey from the uh, Ministry of uh, Cooperation and SME. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, clearly in uh, the next page, that the COVID-19 pandemic has led 
Indonesia has a four steps in accelerating the recovery of FSME uh, affected by COVID-19. First is uh, uh, we active uh, synergy synergy in the local government. Then uh, we have a strategy with the three pillars that is a corporation, capacity, and also finan uh, uh, financing. Uh, so uh, we measure a four step, and then second step is improving capacity. Improving capacity is very, very important by using a digital, yeah? digital, and also we accelerate financial access because in the remote area, sometimes we 
uh, we don't have a channel uh, to to give the access of financial. So uh, digitalization is very important here. And then the last, uh, we impose a policy to utilize digital payment and sales in the traditional market. Yeah, we use a Chris, yeah, use a cashless, and, and also uh, make uh, online marketing yeah? uh, with uh, uh, platform, yeah, e-commerce and etc. Uh, so we doing this, and uh, positively there's an impact. Impact uh, first is cash flow failure is decrease, and capital also have uh, generated here. So in the slide 12, uh, now uh, the situation has changed. Yeah, uh, MSME has a sales uh, increase. Uh, even though this is a bottoming, uh, bottoming out of the situation. Yeah, uh, now uh, the sales increase a little bit increase in one percent, two percent until twenty five percent, but uh, not creeping. Yeah, creeping to to. to uh, to increase yeah, uh, gradually, and the uh, and the slide of thirteen, mm -hmm. do we agree with the MSE uh, to be new source of growth, uh, new source of growth? Yeah, in Indonesia there is a two, two uh, mix mix uh, cliche cliche views of MSME strategic position. First, position uh, of as uh, positive views of MSME position, yeah. Uh, MSME could be contribution to DGP is high. Uh, the role of inclusive uh, inclusive economy and export is high also. Absorp absorption uh, in the unemployment is very good. Yeah, and, uh, it's very good. But there is a negative views also that problem of F S uh, MSME is a capital. This is a, a, a continuous problem, and also unfocused problem and lack of synergy. Because uh, like uh, Mr. Dwi Pranoto from my colleague yeah, in the in the morning uh, said that there are 18, 18 uh, ministry uh, that uh, has a program in uh, developing MSME. Yeah, uh, so there is a segment segmented policy also, and also con, uh, uh, needs continuity to respond to demand. So uh, there is a policy of uh, MSME here. We impose in corporation uh, capacity and access of financing. Uh, maybe can we go next yeah, in uh, uh, slide of 14. Uh, on the potential of the uh, and the follow and development of digitalization, uh, could you imagine that Indonesia recording the highest uh, use in digital mobile phone? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and during COVID-19, digital economic and finance keep increasing. That's in, in uh, my, my slide, yeah. Mobile subscription is uh, 133%. Means that each person has uh, two mobile mobile device, mobile phone, yeah. Uh, internet user also yeah, uh, increase and active social media user is also increased. So digital payment, huge increase. And the population now uh, uh, among uh, 2,060 million population, 163 million is the productive, uh, uh, productive uh, age. Yeah. So, so this is a challenge and also a opportunity for for e-commerce yeah, doing business in Indonesia. So, uh, MSME should uh, catch up the opportunity here. Uh, 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 about the digitalization. So in the uh, uh, 15 uh, slide 15, yeah, uh, uh, another important development is the digital banking, yeah, which takes opportunities on retail markets and MSMEs. Engagement to the digital banking services has indeed changed uh, conventional banking services. So these are examples of digital banking products and features uh, and will facilitate uh, MSEs yeah, it, uh, like that. And slide, uh, following following slide, uh, uh, Bank Indonesia, uh, uh, I have explained here that uh, regarding MSMEs uh, outline of uh, urgency, uh, of the, uh, we have to have a clear roadmap, yeah? clear level one, level two, and level three, uh, clear roadmap with the uh, make it a 
SME as a cluster, solid cluster, and then strengthening the capacity of production, business, and marketing, and also strengthening financial access. This is very important. And then the, uh, the roadmap uh, SME to be upscaling yeah, gradually. Uh, this is uh, uh, the idea. Uh, uh, and then uh, next slide. Uh, uh, more specifically, yeah, if you if you see the, this slide, yeah, the strategy of extending financial access, instrument integration and synergy within ministry and institution lead to the financial access received effectively. You know, in Indonesia, in terms of financing, yeah, in this country has huge, huge and ample liquidity. Yeah, uh, 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 for example, in the uh, left hand side yeah there is a grant yeah a csr yeah, this is a, a, a philanthropist fund yeah no interest yeah but in the middle in the micro there is a, a, a subsidies interest yeah this is scheme and uh, we have to finance msme by the interested subsidies and then in the small and medium we have uh, uh, commercial credits here and you know, in, the institution is uh, various, yeah, uh, uh, from the banks, uh, non-banks, and, and then also special financial organization, state, and, and etc. This is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this is uh, 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 the group of institution that can uh, give uh, SMEs uh, with the credit. The public uh, may also. Uh, using payment uh, in digital and also giving the saving credit investment this is in the context of financial inclusion here okay uh, i i will move, move on to a uh, page 18 uh, this is a very important the momentum of ample liquidity should be uh, uh, connected in a syner uh, synergized uh, way among government authority institution you know, in the battle, uh, there is uh, ample liquidity, uh, credit construction, lower profitability. So we have to take out, yeah, uh, uh, and then uh, the bottleneck, uh, and then uh, and then uh, uh, to, to give the credit financing to MSME in the right hand side, yeah, because MSME has a, a situation with the decreased sales of profit, as low value, lowering capital, and etc. This is very important. So and the, it is needed, uh, the, the, the synergy between uh, government, authority, and also institution and private sector here. More, specific, uh, more specifically in uh, next uh, slide, the regulation of MSME. Actually, we have uh, like a small business for credit, a CUR, yeah? uh, credit for small business, uh, already uh, uh, relaxation already relaxing and, and then, uh, no uh, uh, the the homework is uh, how to uh, uh, increase the demand of msme to take uh, the credit ca ca coming from the institution this is uh, uh, the basic uh, spirit of uh, the slides next msme also entering uh, the ecosystem this is very important uh, everybody uh, that MSME entering ecosystem in the integration. Why I put why I put the word integration in here? Integration between digital economy and digital finance. Why? Because uh, uh, we have. Uh, 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 let me uh, let me now uh, elab elaborate the uh, more deeply here on the potential and challenge yeah, yeah, uh, of the digitalization uh, for MSME. The national uh, strategy, yeah, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, before uh, twenty in the twenty, uh, okay, uh, in the twenty first, yeah, okay, next, yeah, uh, uh, digitalization now has become the reality, yeah, the reality with a rapid increase of digital users, e-commerce, and also digital payment here in line in line with the demographic demographic of. Uh, demographic bonus of uh, Indonesia enjoy uh, currently until uh, five uh, uh, five years ahead yeah to come each people uh, very uh, very 
very uh, uh, very good uh, in using digital uh, devices. Yeah, this is very uh, opportunity. Yeah. Uh, next for slide 22, increasing digi digital uh, transaction has changed uh, the transaction behavior and society of individual and also corporate. Yeah. Here. Uh, uh, there is a potential in development. Yeah, we have a payment. Uh, also, we have to literate also. Yeah, uh, and every kind of sector using a uh, digital platform in Indonesia. Next. Now, uh, I would say that this is the national strategy of uh, MSME development. We have a three pillar. Corporation means that uh, there is a cluster. You make it cluster, and then after you make it cluster you fill in the capacity yeah, by increasing uh, the ability uh, of the uh, resources here and also give a financing. The strategic action here needs a synergy yeah, uh, and also priority sector. We can intervene in the rural area, agriculture, fishery, manufacture, etc. And also we have to uh, make it a business model integration uh, from the cluster, ecosystem, make it uh, a capacity and financing uh, uh, in the program, uh, solid program. This is uh, uh, the important of this slide. Uh, let me emphasize in the next slide yeah, uh, about the challenge of MSME. After pandemic uh, COVID-19, we uh, determined uh, three cases uh, for MSME to uh, have a uh, uh, survival. First is the MS, MSME should be strong, should be creative, should be prepared for a new uh, civilization that is uh, digital. So we have a MSME 4.0 yeah, by uh, e-payment, e-commerce, e and then e-financing. And also we will uh, make a certificate yeah, for uh, digital uh, for SME. There is a challenge, of course, and also opportunity here. So next, uh, uh, I would say that uh, Bank Indonesia, in particular, uh, has uh, integration. Yeah, I said integration between economy and also uh, Bank Indonesia, in particular, support the integration here uh, in the following framework and combining the upscaling MSME, MSME with the enhancement of financial inclusion. You know. Sometimes yeah, there is a decoupling between indicator of financial uh, inclusion with the economy. The branches uh, okay increase, the the account yeah saving account increase yeah credit increase, but the economy sometimes is stagnant yeah. Uh, I mean the Gini ratio still uh, uh, high and, and etc. So uh, this marrying economic uh, inclusion and financial inclusion will generate digitalization and environment, and also economic empowerment through the MSME. This is the idea like this. Uh, I put integration to make uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, from financing and activity can be marrying here, yeah? To make a value added of the economy, something like that. And then uh, 26, I have a note here, Bank Indonesia also support uh, with the digital payment. Uh, we have a Chris, yeah? Chris is, uh, uh, I mean, a QR Indonesian standard to pay uh, uh, digitally uh, uh, in the fresh, uh, in the merchants uh, and also the uh, in the traditional market. The aims of the Chris is how to uh, to change the composition of uh, the the MSME. Yeah, now is the micro is very huge amount. Uh, hopefully, we can invert the, the pyramid here. Uh, the large amount should be uh, medium, yeah, large uh, SME. Okay, next, uh, you can see the benefit of Chris. Uh, now, how, how about the Chris? This is a very uh, a financing uh, through digital payment. Now, every payment, yeah, every activity, you can uh, uh, touched by your mobile phone, yeah. So uh, this is very important to our national merchant repository. This is we want to make a payment ID, yeah. And then this is there is a data analytic, and then 
So we can make a payment score here, credit scoring here and then. So it is no need to 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 uh, to have a credit guarantee, yeah. So uh, because of the liquidity and also we can manage manage the granular data, yeah, uh, uh, regular data, and then we know that activity of the merchant should be uh, 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 identified and. Uh, if the merchant or if uh, MSME need the credit, you can uh, give yeah, by the activity of the digital payment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the uh, uh, last uh, my uh, uh, the takeaway points. First, I have three takeaway, takeaway points point here that MSMEs serve as a new engine, new engine of national economic growth in Indonesia. So MSMEs should productive, should be innovative, and also resilient. And then uh, we have a strategic uh, implementation here in three pillars, I said, plus now digitalization. And then effective financing should be imposed by using formal organization and also CSR and FinTechs. Uh, it is also uh, considered. And then the second uh, takeaway is the digitalization MSME is a key. Yeah? Uh, now digitalization is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, happening, uh, happening. Uh, digital in innovation bring to integrate the economy, and also we want to accelerate the national blueprint that MSME should uh, be prepared to entering the transformation to digital ecosystem. Digital ecosystem is very, very important because the, this is MSME. And then the surrounding is should be supporting to SME, yeah, like a license, yeah, infrastructure, uh, financing, and and and, and etc. So the third, uh, our uh, takeaway point is strengthening the synergy on the national policy for MSME. Policy synergy is a must to strengthen MSME products uh, in the competitive sector uh, priority. Yeah, also, yeah. Uh, improving capacity by program uh, onboarding MSME program yeah, like uh, e-commerce, e-financing, and e-payment should be uh, uh, should be set up yeah, uh, in a systematic and structured agenda. I think will we help uh, MSME in the uh, digital era, yeah, in the new normal era? Then hopefully uh, we together make. MSME as a new source of growth of national economic uh, of Indonesia. Uh, 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 now, uh, on this note, I would end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for Mr. Budi Hanoto uh, that have a presentation about Indonesia, uh, describe how SMS in Indonesia to cover this pandemic crisis of COVID-19. So the SMS uh, have a support from financial institution and then support from the government also, but they have to be creative and open-minded to get the technology, the digitalization to entering their sector in order to get the better life. Okay, thank you. Uh, for Mr. Budi Hanoto, uh, we surprised uh, that uh, you have in this uh, uh, conference uh, because you are one of the alumnus of the Faculty of Economy of UNSED. Thank you very much. If uh, it is not online, uh, if, alumni yeah, if it is not online, so you can be here. So maybe next time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, now we start in the discussion session. Discussion session will start uh, from all the speakers to answer uh, some questions from the participants. They already text in the chat room. Okay, the first one comes from uh, Rizky Malki Daniel to Dr. Donella Kaspers. Uh, how the COVID-19 pandemic that caused the economic disruption, which has an impact on the income of MSMEs. Knowledge from the speaker before, can you give uh, the stimulate 
uh, or some suggestion for Indonesia. Hello, Dr. Donella. Hello, Dr. Donella. Are you still there? Thank you. Thank okay. You very much. Uh, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> So the question is, uh, are there any suggestions for um, yeah, yes. in terms of trying to promote the revenue capacity for mm. SMEs? Yes. I think this is a very complex question and one that maybe when we think about what all the speakers have been saying from their particular country perspectives, including my colleague from Indonesia, there is a very integrated approach to how we might think about how to stimulate economies so that a business model such as SMEs might benefit. Because the, the opportunity does not only come from offering uh, stimulus, like in the case of cash or in the case of even deferral of taxation or in terms of even structural policies, but it also comes from thinking how do we actually uh, foster SME productivity by helping them to uh, retain their workers, keep their workers trained. And then we've all spoken about the application of digital technologies in terms of then harnessing that uh, commercial potential for SMEs. So I don't think I don't think it's necessarily just the one strategy. I think it is a complex integrated set of strategies that um, maybe all of us have really illustrated that our various jurisdictions are attempting to deal with. Okay, um, maybe for the next question, still for Dr. Donella first. Uh, in Australia, is there any specific MSMEs product leading in the digital marketplace following the trend during this pandemic? This is the question from this question from Bayui Chaksono Adi. Yes, there, there, as far as I'm aware, there is no, no specific product. I think is the question referring to maybe uh, specific platforms or a specific mm. I was not quite sure, but as far as I'm aware, there's no specific product. But there is a very comprehensive strategy of SMEs and change and that is at both two levels both in terms of their business processes but also in terms of their identity. Um, so this is next to how to of SME, SME owner managers technologies and also how these can be embedded in their business processes and amongst their workforce. Mm. Okay, um, I, st I, I think I still remember about the previous uh, presentation about uh, the business strategy uh, presented by Dr. Donella that responding uh, immediately uh, because of market change. Uh, this is because of the situation. I think uh, it could be better for SMS to have a, a great response for them. Okay, thank you for Dr. Donella. Next question uh, for... Professor Takeda, uh, it is from Kinan. I would like to ask for, I would like to ask Prof Takeda what strategy is used by Japan in order to encourage the SMEs to stay alive and contribute to the country in this pandemic era. Prof Takeda, hello, Prof Takeda. Prof. Takeda, still in connection? Hello? Uh, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me, Prof. Takeda? Yeah, no, I can hear I'm sorry. You. Yeah. Uh, should I repeat the question? Yeah, your question is uh, for Japanese government or Japanese in facilitation, how uh, Japan uh, as a system encouraging the SME? Am I right? Yeah. How so, the strategy? Hmm. Yeah. And first of all, uh, starting a uh, pandemic uh, starts, uh, probably in February, March, uh, this is six months. 
So government should uh, provide the uh, full financial assistance to be survived. That is the first, you know, what they should do. And after that, uh, the basic nature of their SME is flexible and challenging. So uh, some they are changing their uh, portfolio of the business and uh, uh, let them do first. So I made the lecture uh, and I based on uh, some uh, understanding how to handle a complexity. So it means there is a linear strategy, but it cannot work. So under this concept, first financial support, then uh, we came to know uh, through the last uh, uh, past experience, uh, German style hidden champion. So sticking to the very special area and in this area, they are very strong. This sort of the nature of the company can easily survive. So uh, we would like to provide the some you know, assistance to shift those in strong strategies. That is my concept. So not mm -hmm. linear strategies. That is a basic idea. Non-linear strategy we should make. Yeah. Strategy. OK. Thank you for Takeda. Uh, the next questions still yeah. for Prof Takeda is from Chiria. Uh, is it oh, almost the same? So I will uh, speed up to all uh, to all the speakers from Rais. Do you think that business culture involves in competitive advantage during COVID-19 pandemics. Okay. Uh, first for Prof Takeda first. What do you think about the business culture that involved in sustaining competitive advantage during this pandemic COVID-19? Oh, if there's no, maybe we can uh, jump into Prof Pan. Okay. Okay, Prof Pan. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm, yes, I think uh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, talking about the uh, culture mm -hmm. and the competitiveness issues. Okay. You know, the, in East Asia, uh, the, particularly like the Taiwan, Korea, and uh, Japan, uh, we are some kind of a Confucianism culture. Okay. I think a lot of the, the Chinese in Indonesia, they also share the same culture value as well. You know, the East Asian culture, uh, they tend to be more collective. Collective, collective means uh, uh, the people, they are willing to sacrifice okay, their own uh, interest okay, for the bigger okay, entities or bigger groups, okay, make the bigger group better. So this kind of collective uh, the, 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 the uh, consciousness, actually, uh, particularly during the crisis, it is better for the company to make the every uh, uh, interest involved to understand that we should stand up to to confront the crisis together. Okay, uh, everyone should make a little bit sac sacrifice. Everybody should. Sh share the cost together okay if i failed maybe the others will fail too okay so this kind of the collective uh, consciousness um are very much uh the the, 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 the very much uh, one of the key characteristics in the taiwan uh, small medium sized enterprises okay so therefore i must say uh, during the uh, pandemic period of time uh, this kind of uh, collective uh, the, the self-awareness, okay? They are willing to sacrifice their own interests, okay? They are willing to pay uh, for others, okay? It really can become uh, one of the competitive advantages because we, the, for the company, uh, from the per company perspective or for the country perspective, it is more easier to mobilize, okay? 
more resources or uh, more people uh, to help to contain the crisis. Okay, so that's my short answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, this is interesting uh, because I need to moderate this, uh, uh, was it, uh, plenarization. But uh, Dr. Donella asked to you, Prof. Pan, that uh, this is the question. Dear Prof. Pan, uh, I'm wondering whether there is a trend in Taiwan for the low social contact models of work by Taiwan companies to becoming their preferred mode of working in the future. We are finding this trend in emerging in Australia and I wonder if this is the same in Taiwan. This is from Donella. Okay. <laughs> Ma, Dr. Donella, may you can... Uh, <laughs> wonderful wonderful uh, the speech. Okay, I oh, yeah. enjoy your speech. Yes. <laughs> Send me your files. Okay. <laughs> I would like to keep it. And, uh, yes, I can go through it. Uh, I also learned a lot from you. Thank you very much. Okay. You know, the low social context models in Taiwan, I think something is very similar uh, over the world because of the virus, the pandemics, uh, they are all the same in, mm. in the whole world, right? <laughs> okay, so the way to deal with the virus, okay, the strategies are also more or less the same. For example, like the digitalizations, low social context, okay, et cetera. And, but for the small medium-sized enterprises, in the meantime, uh, to invest in those uh, high-end technology seems to be impossible and uh, not to be realistic okay, to do so. Okay. So therefore, uh, in the meantime, how to become law social context? Okay. And that means we try to, uh, the, the easier way to, is to move everything on in the e-platform, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> move everything in the e-platform. So nowadays, uh, I hardly see my students, right? Because we sometimes we meet each other uh, over the internet, over the platform, okay? And also, uh, being the director of the Continuing Education Center, uh, in the past, I regularly visiting the, the, the companies, okay, for the collaborations. But now, we also become a new normal uh, to meet each other over the internet, okay? And also for the company itself, um, as I mentioned that, uh, lots of companies they have to invest in in the uh, automations. Okay, at least to reduce the reliance uh, in the labor forces, because now uh, the employers are the, uh, the, the the very cherishable assets. Okay, they are very vulnerable <laughs> from the virus. Okay, so being a company, uh, the the owner or the 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 director, we should protect our own. Uh, employers, uh, employees, okay. And um, you can see in, in the meantime, a lot of the uh, SME in Taiwan, they are trying to invest in more automation assets, okay, try to redu reduce the re reliance on the manual workers, okay. So I think that's something uh, become a new normal. And I, I see it will become a, a normal in the future, really, yes. Thank you. I agree. Can I, can I say something, please? Oh, yeah. Is that, is that, yeah. Is that allowable? Thank you very much for your response. I think that this is a very um, informed response because these are some of the challenges facing the sector. How does the sector, uh, how, how do businesses actually now structure to be able to respond quickly when there is now an outbreak and, you know, our governments institute shutdowns, they have to have an ability to respond rapidly and in a flexible way. And a low social context approach is an approach that will enable that. But as, as Professor says, it is something that for the sector has got certain challenges in terms of then the cost of the investment that's required. Um, but this is something that maybe in the next phase, our governments might pay more attention to in terms of how to assist the sector with, with this challenge. But can I just say something just again, just in reference to the issue of the culture, um, that was the previous question, because I think this is a very important uh, matter. 
the, and I agree with you about the Confucius culture, very much so. But also I think SMEs have their own culture in some ways too. That particular business model has got, you know, it's a small, it's everyone knows everyone. Often people have had a relationship for a long period of time, sometimes over generations. And I know a lot of SMEs who have struggled to stay in business to keep their workers, to keep their own workers involved in the business because they have that culture of responsibility. So I think this is something too that is uh, culture is something that comes from our, um, our broader culture, but also maybe the business culture has got something to contribute as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's a nice discussion actually, but uh, because uh, our limitation, uh, so it could be next time or next discussion. Okay, uh, uh, from Nadia to Mr. Budi Hanoto, what is the strategy carried out by Bank Indonesia during this pandemic to help Indonesian SMS? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the strategy, I think, is quite simple. Yeah, Inter internally, Bank Indonesia, Bank Indonesia has uh, four uh, strategy. First, to communicate intensively yeah, what is the program of uh, restructuring credit uh, from uh, government. So, uh, by active communication to the of the government program, especially in in uh, 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 recovery program of uh, uh, MSM. This is first. Second one is uh, uh, to um, uh, to accelerate, yeah, accelerate the the program to increase capacity of MSME uh, with the digitalization, of course, yeah. For example. Uh, if we want to make a capacity yeah, to in, improve the capacity, we have to uh, have a training yeah, and also etc. Yeah, uh, production of, but by using uh, online uh, system. So because there is a, a pandemic, yeah, there is a social distance, and so we cannot uh, meet each other. Uh, so using uh, uh, digital uh, online or. Um, video conference is uh, better. So uh, the, our program is also keep going uh, by uh, 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 making making a, a, a increasing of a, a program cap uh, capacity in MSME. Yeah? Uh, this is the second one. The third one is uh, to accelerate the access of financing. So we have uh, 46 branches in Indonesia so we hand in hand with the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, with the consultant, consultant of uh, MSME, also with the community to bring together to the banks and uh, also to uh, make a facility, yeah, so, uh, to restructure their credit, something like that. It uh, uh, this is looks like uh, uh, make a main, uh, like a assistance uh, assistance to the MSME. To uh, uh, to uh, get the facilitate uh, from the banks. This is the third one, and the fourth, uh, last but not least, Bank Indonesia impose the the uh, 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 online payment, yeah, uh, like uh, make a digital payment and also sales, yeah. Uh, so, like uh, in the tra traditional uh, market, we use a cashless, yeah, with the uh, Chris, uh, with uh, e-commerce. And then we can order from your home. And then, uh, so this is, uh, uh, and then uh, we, we we encourage to uh, uh, cashless uh, transaction, online transaction, something like that. This is for, but uh, the strategic, uh, the whole strategic is we use uh, the corporate corporation and corporatization in uh, using the cluster, and then we fill in the program capacity program, and also we give the financing through the. Uh, Credit restructuring. That's it. Very much. Okay, thank you. That's um, the program needs to be accelerated, and because of some obstacle at this situation, so now we are in online, but uh, maybe some programs will uh, still continue with their 
or, or progress in order to get the better future in SMS, of course. Okay, uh, thank you very much for all the speakers. Uh, first, for Dr. Donella Kaspers from Western, uh, from University of Western Australia, and then thank you very much for Professor Motohide Takeda from uh, Tokyo University, Japan, and then thank you very much for Prof. Pan Huiwa from Yunlin University, Taiwan, and then for Mr. Budi Hanoto, SCA MBA from representative of Bank Indonesia. My okay, pleasure. now the time is up. Uh, let's have a conclusion for this warm discussion. Okay, to enrich, to enlarge, and to empower these SMEs, we need some programs during this pandemic COVID of 19. So, in particularly, uh, this era of uh, digital area could be one the best way of them uh, to cover up how the SMS will going strong in the next future. Okay, uh, thank you very much also for all the committee here to present, uh, to prepare. And of course, it's for Bank Indonesia, initiated by Bank Indonesia representative Purwokerto, they already support and sponsored this event. Okay, plenary session uh, is closing now. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for all the honorable speaker for insightful and informative um, presentation. Now we would like to call all the honorable speakers such as Dr. Donella Kasper, Professor Motohide Takeda, Professor Panwehua and Mr. Budi Hanoto to receive a certificate from the committee. The certificate is proudly for Dr. Donella Casper. And it's time for us to take a photo session. Uh, so we would like to request to all the honorable speaker and also Mr. Dwi, Hanoto, Dwi Pranoto and Mr. Samsun Hadi to stand by uh, to this event because there will be a photo session together. Thank you very much. The Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, those are the agendas we have presented to you this morning, so as we have finished our plenary session. Coming up to the last session, um, we are going to have a call for a paper session. For those who join call for a paper session, please be noted uh, that our session will be start at 12.30. After the break, you can proceed to your presentation room. Thank you very much for your attention. Good afternoon. <laughs>